Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Elwha. Uh, the Elwha River is right over there. Lake Crescent's just down the road. It's absolutely stunningly beautiful here. We're surrounded with mountains, so you gotta come and visit us. Today we're working on an RV refrigerator and um, the customer states that it is not keeping the temperature very efficient. And if you've watched our other refrigerator videos, I'm gonna show you what we found and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix it. So let me take you around. If you've watched my refrigerator videos, you know that one of the most important components of of the refrigerator in an RV is ventilation on the backside. If you do not have proper ventilation on the backside of your refrigerator, you're always going to have refrigerator performance issues. So let me show you what we found on this RV. Okay, so folks, so we've done quite a few refrigerator videos. You can look on our YouTube playlist. Uh, we've got quite a few videos categorized in playlists, and one of them is gonna be for refrigerators. So I've got quite a bit of information on those. Um, we've got a really tight schedule today, so I don't have a lot of time to go through all that, but the purpose of this one is the ventilation. So this refrigerator is in a slide room, and when you have these absorption type refrigerators in a slide room, it does add an extra component to the ventilation part. Air is lazy. Think about air. It's just lazy. It's going to take the path of least resistance, much like a river. So this is warm. This is hot. The refrigerator is actually a heating appliance, believe it or not. Watch my other video on how we explain how hot makes cold. And air is going to be drawn into this. It's going to go up through what we're going to call the chimney, and it's going to come out the top. So air is drawn in here. Okay, so I'm going to climb up the ladder. And it's going to come out of here. So I've got another refrigerator video that discusses, actually I'll make a link to it, but it discusses what this condenser fin's purpose in life is. And I've even got a video where I do a little drawing on this, but we've actually found one here. So here's your condenser fin. Now I wanna bring the camera closer. Dakota's my cameraman today. Come a little closer, Dakota. I don't know if you can climb up the ladder with us. Okay, I grabbed the camera from Dakota here. Here is our condenser fin. Here is our opening. And see this big opening right here? Hey Dakota, why don't you climb up the other side of the ladder? You can hold the camera at more of a wide angle. I wanna make sure you guys can see what we're seeing here. So this is a pretty high-end uh, uh, DRV. Okay, so you take the camera. Dakota's got the camera again. Sorry for any shaking. And I'll step down a step. So can, can you see all this, Dakota? Mm -hmm. Good, okay. So here's our condenser fin. This is the action shot, this right here. This is what the refrigerator is really all about. When that ammonia uh, vapor comes up here, we need to get the water back out. So we really want this air that's being drawn up through this chimney to go through this condenser fin. So see this big void? This is the way it came from the factory. And so if I'm air, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna go through this. And there's also a big void up on top of here. Okay, so there's a huge void on top of this thing. Air is just gonna come right out through here. Okay, so what we really want to do is we want to force the air to go through the condenser vent and then out. So we started to cut some of this flashing. Okay, and I'm going to, well, we'll take you over to our little trailer and show you what we're doing. So I cut flashing. This is just chimney flashing. You get it at the hardware store and we has, uh, go to Harper Freight, get yourself a, a, a brake, uh, a press brake to bend it or just however you want to bend it. But we're going to basically be putting one here. Okay. And, and we're gonna secure it all. And so basically it was long, so we basically cut it in half. The other one's gonna go here, and I'm gonna give you some camera close-ups of this, but Dakota's gonna to try to get some shots in. So we're gonna make it pretty when we're all done here, but I just wanna conceptually show you what we're doing. We have had some questions on folks asking how to do this. It is gonna be okay to screw screws right into the back of the refrigerator. We'll match, match these all up and screw them to the top. So here we have on the top, air is gonna deflect out. Now on the side here, We've cut this fancy little piece. He's going to go over here, okay, and um, we've put this little little angle on him, okay, so we're going to attach him here, okay, we're going to put another one here, and then we've got another one that's going to go here, so um, we'll, we'll take you to the trailer and show you what we're doing, but we were already going to do this and, and leave, and then I'm... I think Dakota and I were deciding, well, let's make a video we can add value to you guys on, on how to make these flashings. Because if this is an, a pretty high-end fifth wheel and it came from the factory like this, imagine what some of these other RVs are like. So your homework assignment is to go, if your refrigerator is in a slide room, your assignment is to go see if you've got this big void right here, okay? And if you do, then this is a solution that I came up with that every time we've done this works out great. And um, so, create this this little baffle that you will the other thing on these refrigerators is you want a less than a zero 
uh, or less than a one inch gap along the back wall, which this one does have. And you want zero clearance on the side walls and, and zero clearance on the top. Now this one had a big void on the top and this one also had this big void right here. Therefore, the cooler, the air is not coming through this. That's the point I really am trying to stress here. And so however you want to design this is up to you. I'm going to use flashing and we're going to attach it here. The benefit of that is if we ever need to service this again, it's just going to be screws. It's going to be easy to disassemble and get back into here and then put those pieces back together if we needed to. Um, some of the manufacturers will put uh, Luon paneling here and um, that's great. I don't have a problem with that, but it does make it difficult to service because they're attaching it from the inside. Okay. Um, now, another thing is if your refrigerator is in a slide room, you must have fans. Now, this refrigerator has two fans just down below, about right here. This right here is going to be your fan thermostat. Turns on at about 130, turns off at about 105. Um, and uh, so it's going to be on this fin and that's what's going to turn your fans on. If you're, th we were here the other day, the thermostat we tested, the thermostat was bad, but the fans do work. If you wanted to test that, you can get this, off. well, just touch these two together. I use um, needleless pliers sometimes, take your little right angled hook, pop these off. Just basically you want to touch these two together and that'll tell you if your fans are working. If your fans are working and this is really hot and you can get your, your little probe, temperature thing and it's over 130 degrees and it's not working, there's a good chance that this thermostat shot. Um, makes sense? Good. Okay. And uh, so I've got fans down here. The both fans are working. We've got a new thermostat on here. So we know that that part's working, but now we are going to put the flashing on. So with that, you see we have the top flashing on here and I can feel it's already getting a little warm. So the heat's coming up through here and we're going to make this one. We're going to make another one to go on this side and then we're going to do this. So. Uh, Let's go to the trailer and this piece here is 28 inches and we'll show you how we're going to make that happen. Okay, folks, so we've got you set up on a tripod. Dakota's here and the job site's here. So we know that that bottom piece, I figured I've already cut a bunch of these things. So we'll just show you how we do this. I don't know, figured like a good thing. So we are at 28 inches. So we've got our 28 inch mark thusly, okay. And this is just flashing gear at a hardware store. Hey, Dakota, mm -hmm. gently hop up there and hold this so it doesn't keep curling back on me. Mm. What a seal. Seal has had a source question. Okay, uh, I think you're totally blocking the shot. How are the people supposed to see? Beautiful, beautiful back head. Okay, so here we go. All right, so we cut. Okay, that can be moved. We are now at 28 inches. Um, okay, now you can come back out here and do not trip over the cable. Okay, good. Kids. This device here is, I think, a press brake or a brake press or whatever. I'm sure I'll get comments on what people call these things. Hold that down. Okay, so we know that um, we want to bend this thing, okay? So we want to bend it, but we want it to, after it bends, we want it to come up six and a quarter inches, right? So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to six and a quarter. Now, how do I know it's six and a quarter? Because I measured from the bottom of my opening to about an eighth or a quarter of an inch up to the fins. And that was six and a quarter, okay? That's how I know. So we're going to make a mark at six and a quarter, which is right there. We're gonna come over here, six and a quarter. The beautiful thing about this type of flashing work is it doesn't have to be exact exact because no matter how perfect you get it, it's it's you're dealing with air. So put this on here. Okay, now you're gonna line this up with this little groove. Be very groovy right there. And then you're gonna bring our mark to there. Okay, so. I've worked with these big brake presses in shops and they're freaking huge and they're wonderful to work with. And um, then you get these things here in the field and um, you don't have the same. There we go. Okay, so we're happy with that. We're gonna clamp one side here. I only found one pair of channel locks in my shop so Dakota's gonna hold the other one. 
And basically we bend this up. I want there to be a little bit of a spring load to it. So I'm just gonna get a little bit. Okay, so this is the part that's gonna be attached to the bottom and this is the part that's gonna be pressing up against the fins, right? So what the press, press, press brake did brake, is it made this nice little even thing. Now, I'm hoping that I can fit this in as one piece, but I doubt it. And that's what we found with the other one. We had to cut it in half to fit half in on one side and half in on the other. So now I'm probably gonna have to even cut this. So, but I, I'm pretty confident that this part here, that six and a quarter, I'm pretty confident that this part here is going to be able to fit on the bottom and then push against my condenser fins, okay? So, um, and then and then I might need to cut this to make it fit on the, the space that I have. But let's go see what we got. First of all, I don't know if I have to cut this in half. And um, secondly, I don't know how much of a gap I have here. But again, the idea is I wanna make that air very slippery and streamlined. I don't wanna cause any restrictions that it would decide it wants to take the day off. All right, so with all of that, we're going to move some things. Yeah, they've got a, um, a big one of these and a little one of these. So when we started doing flashings for a refrigerator, I got the big one. I don't think they were that expensive. Um, I don't do this. I don't do this that often, so it's not like we need to, to uh, invest in the big shop kind. So, okay, let's go back over to the refrigerator. Okay, we were lucky. We don't have to cut this in half to make it fit. And, uh, but what we do need is we need to cut this here because even though this fits, okay, um, I want this to be more of an angle. See how my hand is? So what we're gonna do is Okay. We're basic. I'm going to do some measuring it and we're going to probably cut a strip of this off. So tape measures right here. And like I said, I want a little bit of an angle to them. So I'm going to cut them at about two and a half inches because that's, that's about what I, what I have here. So if I cut this bottom piece at two and a half inches, that'll give me a little bit of an angle. It'll, it should come just, just about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch here. Um, and that's what we're shooting for. Okay. So I'm back. I've cut this. So if this was mounted here, you will see that we're right, um, we're right about where we want. In fact, what I'm looking at is, okay, so once I put the screws here in the bottom, I think now you can, you can see that we're forcing that air through here. And what I would like to do, see, I've got a little bit of an angle right here. I might cut another inch or so off of this because I really want this to be more deflected this way. But you know, maybe not because this thickness is the thickness of the wall. You can see that right here. So we don't really gain anything on that. So um, we will, uh, we'll go ahead and screw this in, screw the top piece in, screw the sides in, and those little extra voids that we have in there, we'll fill that with foil tape. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. You don't see, need to see me putting screws in. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're at the end of the journey. We've got flashing at the top, flashing on the sides, flashing here. So follow the air, right? The air is going to flow up. It's going to hit this. It's going to hit this. It's gonna, the only way the air can come. And I, this is already getting warmer than it was before. Before this was was not. It was it was it was warm, but it, it's noticeably warmer. So we're forcing the air through. Now the reason it's warmer is probably because the refrigerator is on. Um, but anyway, so there you go. And this is just kind of spring loaded, pushing against the fins. Air is going to be forced through. We blocked it off here. We blocked it off on the top. We blocked it off here. Okay. So if, um, if this was handy, give us a thumb up. Hope it helped you watch our other videos, subscribe. You'll get a little indication when we start making more videos. We're starting a new series called 10 minutes with an RV tech. That's basically 10 minutes with me where I basically answer questions. So if you have any questions, um, you could head over to our 10 minutes with a tech and just stick them there. Or you can put a comment on this if you have any questions on this, but we're going to probably be answering them on the 10 minutes with a tech series. You're about to drop your glove. And um, so from Elwha, Washington, this is Dakota and Darren signing off until the next video. Happy campers say my RV works. All right. Cut. <laughs>